So it's still a tradition, but, um, and one today, so. Part. up. Well, I'm going to turn off my mic. We're going to see if that's the problem. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to start again. Pause my children in this space between Christmas parties and those of the new year, between gift wrapping and cleaning up, between longing and thanksgiving, between endings and beginnings, between dismay and joy, between sacred and ordinary. Pause to remember whose you are and whose you always be. Pause and remember in whose name you pray and whose love you seek and hold and give away. Pause and pray that all may see the world with the eyes of wonder of the newborn Christ, with a loving heart of God's act of self-giving. Pause and pray that we may all treat one another with honor and adoration, with the honor and adoration Mary and Joseph, shepherds and wise ones, and angels and all the heavenly choir show to the tiny child. During this service, in the name of Christ, we pray for every person living now, gone before, or yet to come in every nation on earth. Let us worship God.
may be seated. Please join with me in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you in this season of celebration, but also a time of cold and dark and rain, looking again for the warmth of your light. Lord, today we remember families in our own neighborhood, but also in our country and around the world who are cold. And we pray that you would bring them warmth. And Lord, we remember those whose lives are spiritually chilly. And we pray for them too. Lord, continue to warm people's homes in a very practical way and warm people's lives with hope and love and grace. Lord, this morning we gather in this service to rehear the good news. May there be something in these scripture readings or songs for us today, something that you need us to hear, something we can take with us this morning. Lord, we pray for all people we pray for no more darkness and gloom for those who are in anguish. Lord, we pray that you would lift the burdens and the guilt of people not just gathered in this sanctuary, but people in our neighborhood, in our community, and our world. Lord, we pray that you would remove the things that oppress us from our lives and bring freedom to people everywhere. Lord, we pray that you would give us courage in the face of those we fear and those things we fear. And we pray for courage for all people who are afraid this morning. Lord, your light calls us forth to follow you and serve you. Your light is not just for us, but for everyone in this world. So as we gather to worship and hear this good news again today, May we be inspired again to be a people who reflect your life and your light in our lives, in our service, in our words, and in all we do. Lord, we give you special thanks today for the blessings of our family. We pray for the places where our families are imperfect and broken. We give you thanks that um, the Courtney family is home and pray for blessing and healing and rest and many good days to come for them. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We want to say thank you for your generosity. Um, we raised well over $2,000 at Christmas Eve to help um, for local causes that might come up in the community in the years to come. So thank you for your generosity. And thanks for being a church that was so welcoming on Christmas Eve. Um, that's what generosity looks like, too. And it was a great night. I think we'd all agree. So thank you.
I want to say thank you to our readers today for reading. They are members of Session and Deacons. Also, please note we're only singing a few verses of each carol, so pay attention to those numbers. And we're going to remain seated throughout this time. So thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. Today's first reading comes from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. The second lesson today is from Genesis 17, verses 1 through 8. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. 
You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you the father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. lesson this morning comes from the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 and then continuing with verse 6 through 7 the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined then with verse 6 for a child has been born for us a son given to us authority rest upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
The fourth lesson comes from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, and then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, who, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting that this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be the son, called the Son of the Most High. <clears throat> the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born, will, when to, uh, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
The story continues. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The seventh lesson comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Now there were in the same country shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them and into the heavens, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. <coughs> now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praised God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them.
excuse me, the eighth lesson is the first 14 verses of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have been his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth.
you again to all of our musicians today. As I got in the car um, this morning to head to church, I was dismayed to discover that all of the Christmas music is now off the radio. And so it's good that we gather today to enjoy these songs and hear this good news again and be reminded that this good news isn't just for a season, but for every day of our lives. So let us continue to live as people of light, not just this day, but every day of the new year. So go out living with justice and kindness and walking your path humbly with God because then you will find yourselves blessed. You may stand for a blessing. Know that yours is the kingdom of heaven. Know that yours is all of the grace and mercy of God. Yours are all of the blessings given to God's very beloved children. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and let all God's people say, Alleluia. Amen. Thank you.